Welcome to DOS Geek. So I've spent the last three weeks playing in the Apple ecosystem. I've spent four years doing videos and podcasts talking about Linux. I've spent two decades in the Windows ecosystem, but I've not really spent a ton of time in Apple, so I needed to fix that. So I have a Mac Mini, I have a MacBook Air, I have the iPads, I have the MacBook Pro. To really understand what is it about the Apple ecosystem that generated a $1.5 trillion empire, products that people love, products that people look at as a symbol of their lifestyle and their art. What is it about this company that makes so many people love it and also so many people hate it? A lot of them seem to join my comment section, but that's on them. That's what I wanted to explore. And that's what I've been figuring out in these past couple of weeks. And it's been a fascinating journey. There's a reason, though, that in all of my experience, I never really got into the Mac ecosystem. There were things that kept me away from it, like the idea of walled gardens and the expense of their hardware when you compare it spec wise to other hardware. And these are things that I'm starting to understand more and more of why people put up with the expense of the Apple computer when you compare it spec for spec against say a Dell or Lenovo. And we'll get into that in later videos. But the one thing I really haven't been able to get over, and it's a really important one, is what is Apple's contribution to open source? Open source is vitally important. In fact, Apple's based on it. They've taken a lot from open source over the years. So certainly they're giving a ton back. Again, $1.5 trillion. I mean, we have another trillion dollar company out there, Windows, and now they're one of the biggest contributors to open source out there. And then you've got Linux, of course, which is based in open source. So what's Apple doing in the Apple ecosystem to support and to provide back to the projects that gave them so much? That's what we're gonna explore in this video. There are over 331,000 organizations contributing to open source today, according to projects just on GitHub. Open source software is taking over. Developers love the security and the privacy, and experts out there are demanding it for their organizations. Apple has a dedicated page here to, to open source that you can see. And they actually, a lot of people don't realize, have contributed to open source in the past and currently to things that we even utilize today within Linux. So when you go to their open source page, you'll notice a couple of things here. The first one, of course, is Swift. And Swift is their programming environment, programming language to make apps and things for the Mac ecosystem. So it's a little self-serving, but that's okay because a lot of the open source projects that you see that are contributed to from big companies are self-serving. At the end of the day, again, companies don't really care about you personally as much as you want to believe it. You don't get to join some special club when you buy their product. You're just somebody handing them money. And so they're looking to make money here and they obviously want to get the developers into Swift, which as I understand it, I've only played and dabbled in it a little bit. A lot of people liken to Python and others, a very simple language to learn with a lot of tools Apple provides to help people learn it. So that's good. And that's what most of their contributions recently seem to be based upon. You have WebKit here, which is the open source rendering in engine introduced by Apple, Power Safari on Mac OS and iOS. Now this also WebKit has been utilized to develop Chrome. So for people who are like, well, that's completely self-serving and I don't use Safari, WebKit was also utilized there as well. So that's one of their contributions. Research Kit and Care Kit, probably their two most important contributions that they've made to this point. This is their work that they're doing with things like the Apple Watch, and they are contributing to medical technology in an open source way. So we know that it's private, it's not being abused to understand like heart rhythms, to understand uh, underlying health conditions that can be captured by these electronic devices and things. Very important and critical information that has saved lives. There are people out there whose lives have been saved from the technology and data that's being gathered in this open source project 
So very, very important project there. Bonjour, all of the device discovery, printer discovery, that type of thing based on auto discovering of devices and services is a contribution that Apple has made. Of course, Unix. Mac OS combines a proven Unix foundation with an easy to use Mac interface to bring industrial strength computing to the desktop. Okay, well, that's a sales line, but obviously they have their roots in Unix and they have contributed there down the road. Um, their command line tools that they have there, of course, that they utilize and some of their LLVM compilers and things like that are open source projects as well. But for a $1.5 trillion company, it looks a little light here, but maybe it's because Apple actually has their own GitHub page now and there's more things here. So we see LLVM, which is good. This is one of their C++ projects, 215 stars, 1,933 forks of this. But then everything else here seems to be, there's a password manager resources, but Swift, 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 Swift. Swift, there's a lot of Swift here. And if we go through the pages, it doesn't get much better. It's a lot of Swift. There's some Darwin here, because if people don't know that Mac OS actually does release once it's of course deprecated the kernel behind the Mac OS operating system. So that does get open sourced. Not all the GUI implementations and things on top of it, but the kernel itself is open source. And listen, every project that they donate to open source should be appreciated. And I'm certainly not trying to put down anybody's contribution because something is better than nothing. But again, I think that Apple here clearly shows that they're not as much of an open source patron as they could be. Um, we have the HomeKit ADK here, which is interesting. So there are some other things outside of Swift, but certainly most of their contributions to this point are Swift based and there's 85 people who are working on this here on the apple.com GitHub page. So Apple does contribute to open source. Cups is another example. I know a lot of people in Linux utilize Cups. Personally, it's not one of my favorite things, but it's practically in every Linux desktop and that was heavily contributed to by Apple, of course, as well as X11 because they used to completely use X11 was something that was contributed to by Apple. So all of this to basically say that Apple does in fact contribute to open source. They seem to wait a lot, except for things like research kit and stuff, which saves lives. That's very important. That's very awesome contribution they have. But again, at $1.5 trillion, they could do so much more. Now I will give them this. A lot of people talk about Apple's being this closed garden. But the reality is every open source project out there that I utilize, I can install in Mac OS and utilize that program with no problem. I'm in here right now utilizing all the open source programs that I utilized over in Linux. The terminal and command line, of course, using ZSH and in combination, of course, with Homebrew allows me to execute a lot of the same commands that anybody else would execute over there in Linux. So not to put Apple down. In fact, this is really for a lot of people probably news that they didn't realize Apple was involved in X11. They didn't realize it was involved in FreeBSD. They didn't realize it was involved in Cups and Bonjour and things that they utilize every day in Linux. And these are contributions that Mac has made. But certainly, if somebody was to say, as big as Apple is, as much as they've benefited from open source, they should be contributing, be one of the top contributors out there. They should be out contributing Microsoft. They should be out contributing Facebook. They should be out contributing Google, but they're not even in the same top 10. I think Apple ranks somewhere like 13th in contributions to open source, which is a shame because I think one of the things that Apple is trying to get to, and I think one of the reasons Microsoft is suddenly interested in Linux is to go after the developers, the developers who are now working in the cloud and working with the servers who want and need Linux to be able to do that. Another example of this is Bootcamp, which allows you to spin up their competition's operating system Windows, but has no ability to work with Linux. If there is, I haven't found it, but if you have Windows, you can have Bootcamp set up and have a, a nice VM set up with Windows there, so you can do stuff in Windows. 
I mean, this is strange to me. Why wouldn't you choose something that's a little more neutral like Linux and make that at least work as well as Windows does in Boot Camp? But instead, you have to use something like Parallels, which works very well, but is not open source software and costs very expensive. It's like $70 a license for Parallels. So it's it's almost like they don't get it themselves. And I have to think as brilliant as the developers are in Apple that a lot of them could probably send the message up to the top from within, change from within, that they want to be more involved with open source. They want to contribute more back to open source and be able to see the power of Linux and things implemented into Mac OS, similar to what Windows has done with their operating system, or at least make it work with Boot Camp. I mean, that seems pretty simple. I really hope that at the closure of this conference that Apple is running this week, that we hear more about open source. They mentioned and showed Linux, I think around three times at the beginning, running in a VM, which was parallels again. Uh, I think that developers out there want it. I think that the people who are contributing to the software on the Apple side probably want to get involved in something that's just bigger than just making money, but something that contributes back to society, something that contributes back to closing important issues like the digital divide, which is what open source provides. And I really hope, I really hope that Apple goes out there and takes a look at itself and thinks about how it can really truly contribute back into the open source ecosystem that made it what it is today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Were you surprised that Apple had any contributions? Were you aware of Apple's contributions? And where do you stand on the issue of Apple contributing back more to the open source world? I would love to hear from you and know what you think. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching this video.